forward to our iCloud. Got it. Got it. Hi, I'm just going to do a short little intro here. I am Karen Ray, the founder at Fave Biz Society, and we are in our creator studio where we are learning and growing and connecting and moving our businesses forward together. We love doing things uh, together and to um, bring in speakers to learn some new tips. And Nicole X. Ritchie, I have to say, has been a lifesaver in my business because overwhelm, chaos, that digital tech stuff. Oh my gosh, it just can be overwhelming sometimes. And, but if you have those tips, those tricks, those, uh, the clarity and the direction, what a difference it makes. So Nicole, I'm going to hand it over to you and let you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you and, and get going on our workshop here. Yes. Thank you, Karen, for letting me do this. I love sharing my stuff with the people. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, my name is Nicole Lexerchi, and I've been helping people with their technology for, for many, many years in a variety of different ways. And I, I, my clients range in tech skill to learning how to use the mouse to doing a little bit of back-end programming on their websites. So it's like, it's a wide, wide range. And so even in this presentation, there's going to be some things that I'll tell you that you'll be like, why did you need to say that out loud? And then there will be some other things that, that you may hear that are like, okay, I don't even know what you're saying. I didn't even know that was a thing. And I don't even know why I need to know it. So we're going to have a range. So, so my goal for you is to take, you know, one or two things that you can actually use to improve your situation. Cause you know what you need to move your, your businesses and lives forward. And I can help you do that with technology stuff <laughs> to a certain degree. Um, uh, my my specialty is in in the area of email files calendars and contacts so that very foundational technology what I call the digital office so it's like we can do cool things with social media we can do cool things with websites and we can interlink integrations and all this stuff but if you have a hard time responding to your email if you have a hard time figuring out where your files should live and where to find them after you've created that beautiful thing then it doesn't help. You know, all these other magical things just become that much harder. And I'm hoping that in this presentation, I can give you some nuggets to make it just a bit easier. Um, and, and before I start, how many of you are pretty proficient in multitasking in Zoom? Meaning you can minimize us, still hear us and work on your computer. So how many feel pretty proficient in doing that? And then how many of you, well, actually, I think maybe I, I, how many of you would like a tutorial on that? So in your, in your Zoom, you've got a couple ways of viewing it. You've got your window and you have your uh, full screen. So if your Zoom fits the entire screen and you're in full screen, you can generally, you know, click on that Zoom window somewhere to activate it and then hit escape and it'll shrink down a bit. It might shrink down a lot. You can also, once it's shrinked down from full screen, you'll see either three little dots in the upper left corner if you're in a Mac and you've got red, yellow, green, or in the upper right hand corner if you have a PC where you'll have a line, a square, and an X. Clicking on the middle, the, the yellow or the square will allow you to shrink and move your, your window. Uh, clicking on the, the little line on the PC will shrink it all the way. Clicking on the yellow on the map will click it all the way. And you can make it big and make it small and make it big and make it small as you work on stuff. And so feel free to practice that. And if you get stuck, um, just raise your hand and maybe we'll, we'll schedule a, a Zoom uh, tutorial session, you and me where we can play with stuff. So we can schedule that after the presentation. So I'm gonna get started on the great magic that I'm hoping to share with you. And let's go to click share. And let's share this one, that's interesting. Well, isn't that fun? So here you can see the presenter view of the presentation, but not the presentation. So let's go to the presentation. 
I may have paused. And yeah, there we go. And now we'll share this one. All right. And we'll scoochie this guy out of the way. All right, so welcome to uh, Detangle Your Digital Office. Our goal is to set up your digital office so that it can support you as you do your important work. So I want you to just kind of come with me on a story about Marion. So Marion is brilliant at what she does. Um, she loves her work and she likes to arrange things so that they work for her and not against her. And so we're going to follow Marion on her day, which started out really, really well. So she got up on time. She was able to do a bit of yoga, dropped her kids off from school on time. She knew, had a vague, you know, general plan of her day where she was going to get to work on her genius work, the thing that's most important in her business, in her day. Um, and she's super excited about that. She got to is getting to prepare materials to present to her client the next day, we'll say. Or you can think, what is the most exciting thing that you get to do in your work? That's the thing that she gets to work on today. But before she can get to her genius work, she needs to decide, am I going to check my email first or am I going to check my email after? So in the comments, could you let me know whether or not you are a before the project email checker or an after the project email checker. I think I need to adjust my little screen so I can see comments. I'm gonna pause the share so I can get that comment chat box opened and then we'll reshare the screen. So we got some afters, we got some befores. The truth is it doesn't really matter because you know what's best for you. Some of us like to know what fires are a burning. And some of us like to be like, you know what, the fires will deal with themselves and I will work them out later, but I want to get to my stuff. So however you do it, that's the way you do it. And that's excellent. So let's say that for those of you who uh, check your email before you do your genius work. Let's say that that's how Marion is doing it. And for those of you who check your, your, your email after the genius work, we're going to say that that's how Marion is do it, doing it. So at some point in her day, she needs to check her email. Now, depending on how organized her digital office is, will determine whether or not this little adventure is a 20 minute exercise or a four hour exercise. So let's take a look at Marion's email here. We've got a bunch of emails. In her email, she's going to have a couple of newsletters. She's going to have some spam or spam-like emails. She's going to have some emails that she needs to save for later because she can't actually deal with them right now. And we're going to say, for the sake of this little exercise, that she has four emails that are very important and she needs to deal with them. So we're going to go through that process with her. Um, and to help you gather the nuggets that might be useful in your individual situation, I have a handout. So how many of you have been able to print out the handout or don't really need to worry about the handout? Um, I will put that link in the chat just in case you want it. It's not a, an epic handout. It's kind of fun. Makes it a little easier to follow along if you need to, you know, doodle and do an extra extra thing to, to focus on, on stuff. But it's got some fun little fill in the black, fill in the blanks. So first we're gonna talk about the digital office. That's your email, which allows you to communicate. So we could also lump in here your, your social, your DMs, your your any way that you communicate. You want this line to work well for you. Moving on from your communication, you need to have a way that's organized to deal with the information in your life, whether it's your, your cloud file storage or just on your computer file storage, um, maybe even a Trello board or your, your task list, however you keep your information organized. That's your, your files situation, your information. 
And then how do you manage your time? So that's your calendar, your productivity. This is also comes into play as you're planning your day and answering your emails. And then, of course, the most important thing, the whole point we're in this situation is managing our relationships. And, and we're going to talk through even deeper how these four emails touch these different areas of your digital office and how an organized digital office will help you. So I'm going to give you the secret right off. The secret to managing your digital office, and, and I, it's a secret, but it really, really shouldn't be. The secret to managing your digital office is to balance your improvements with your maintenance. There's no getting around it. If anybody who has ever cleaned their garage, lost weight, got healthy, got fit, organized a, a junk drawer knows you can improve the thing, but if you don't have a plan for maintaining the thing, you're gonna find yourself back at square one and be super bummed out. We don't want anybody bummed out. So we're going to kind of build in that we're gonna improve this thing and we're gonna set a plan for how we're gonna keep it improved. So warning for some of you, some of these, um, these images are graphic in nature. Haha, ha, I'm funny. And if you need to, you know, you can put in the comments if you're scared, if you're worried, I can slow down. But some of these graphics are going to be super, super scary. But we will get through it and I will be here to help you. First off is this one. This particular one is, is a bit scary because it is out of order and is the most scary image in my presentation. And so I'm going to skip it. And we're going to go to, oh no, we're not going to skip it. I'm okay. I rearranged everything just so I could be more efficient. And of course, so we're back to the, the good line. This isn't the scariest slide. So first off, this is the, this is the email. It is kind of scary because there's 4,000 emails in this inbox, but it's okay. We see the email we need to answer. And that email is, can I get a list of references, please? So how many of you have gotten the email where somebody's like, I need contact information. So this might be a list of references or it might be, hey, do you know that person who did that thing? And you're like, oh yeah, I totally do. Well, let's say that poor Mary and she gets this and she's like, yes, I will definitely connect them with Amy. Okay, which Amy is it? If you've ever had a contact list, you've probably come across this particular situation. You have a super ton of Amy's in your system, but which one's the right Amy? Is this the current Amy or is this Amy after she's moved to Colorado or moved to Canada or, or, or changed her phone number? So this is a super scary situation and we want to be able to manage this kind of situation. So Marion is going to actually skip this email because it's a little bit too much to work with right now and she's in a hurry. So we're going to move on to the next email. And this is the email I need to reschedule or, hey, can we meet on this day, on this time, on this place? And you're like, oh, yeah, totally. I would love to reschedule this. And so what about looking at your calendar and uh oh, you've left your calendar on the bus. Or, or maybe your calendar is way too full, or maybe you've got three or four calendars to look at. This can cause a bit of trauma in your life where you're like, I know that we can reschedule it. I know I have time, but I'm not sure where it is. So I'll have to get back to you. So Marion's going to skip that one and move on to the next one. Here we've got Marion's assistant saying, attached is that report you need. Or here is that information you've been waiting for. Or here's that one thing that will move the project forward. It could also be an email where it's like, hey, do you have that thing? Remember that we worked on it and I really wanna look at this again. And you, you wanna be able to deliver that information to someone. So you need to check your, your computer to see where is this thing located? Or maybe you're like, hey, great, I got this thing now, where should I put it? Oh my goodness, this is a super scary slide. Where do we put this file? where we know that we will be able to find it again. Do we put it over here on Kyoko's forehead or do we keep it on my nose? Um, put it over here in the corner. 
when you've got a situation like this that gets out of control, just opening your computer can be stressful. So we're going to try to avoid this situation. But right now, again, Marion's in a hurry. So she's like, I will deal with that later. Keep it in my email. And then we come to our super, super scary slide, which I thought was ahead, but it was behind. So this one here, everybody brace yourself. First off, are we all okay right now? Nobody panicking? Is there any panicking? Panic level low? Okay, all right. So here we've got our scariest slide yet. And this slide is this one right here. And when you look at it, you don't initially see why it's so scary and, and sad. But first off, you can look at it and, and you might say, ah, it's scary because there's 5,000 emails in this inbox. That's kind of scary for some people. Me, it would freak me out because I'm a near zero inbox kind of girl. How many, who's my zero inbox people? No zero inbox people? Does anybody want to be zero inbox people? Some, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> a little bit i don't know that's scary so we're going to say that this actually is not that scary of a number because some people are inbox zero people some people aren't some people want to be some people have tried and are like yeah no i'm not a zero inbox person and that's okay what is scary about this slide is that we're on page two so here this this particular particular uh, email account is, is, is a Google, which means we have pages. So here we're looking at emails 51 through 100 of the inbox. If you're in Outlook, you, that's scrolling down quite a bit. If you're in, in other pages, there, there might be either scrolling way down a bit or flipping pages, whichever it is. This is on page two. This is way down there. So that's kind of scary. But that's not the scariest part. The scariest part is this right here. Here we have an email from Michaela Apple. I would like to get started right away. So that's, oh my goodness, this is an email on page two with someone who wants to work with Marion. And unfortunately, I'm gonna go back. It's unread, which means Marion missed it, which is extra super sad. So we, this is the thing that we don't want to have happen to you. This is my whole point of why I do what I do is I want you to be able to see these emails and respond to them right away. So we've got the email that I want to get started right away and we're going to move back to the secret. And that secret is we're going to manage our improvements with our maintenance. So that this will not happen to you. So that when you can go into your, your email, when, when Marion opens her email, she'll be able to see really just the four emails. And I have solutions for this in, in my game, which we'll talk to, we'll talk about, and we'll also get to some actual solutions that you can implement today. But I'm going to read the comments real quick and see if there's anything I need to respond to. So here we go. Hello, wonderful. Nice to see you here. Uh, looks like we've got some inbox zero people, some not inbox zero people. Oh, Melissa, I would love to hear about the unopened emails in your inbox because we will fix that. Same with you, Jackie. Yeah, and poor Karen missed one. I really am. I so Diane, you're in your you're, you're sad that you're in your notifications, or you're happy that you're in your notifications or you're not reading your notifications. I think I need a clarity on that one. I think notifications can be great. <laughs> really sorry. <laughs> so maybe too many notifications. <laughs> notifications are a pain. All right, so one of the things that I have is this, this digital office game where Whatever the thing is, so it might be that 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 scary email in Marion's inbox that she missed. Maybe that is something that's never happened to you. Maybe you identified more with the crazy uh, wallpaper of many many icons when you turn your computer on and it causes you stress. Or or maybe maybe you want to get your calendars together or or one of those things. I've got this digital office game where we can go through and actually look at. 
a solution for each of those things. So we're going to go to the actual game page here on my website where we have you find which which system you want to improve, whether it's you need to conquer your email or you need to connect your cloud drives, figure out your naming conventions. We've got a ton of resources here. And so I'm just going to put this page in the chat and it's free and available and ready for you. And you can play with that at any time. But we want to get to the point where when Marion opens her email, this is more what it looks like. We got a little bit of nonsense here, but she can see right away the emails that she needs to deal with. And she wants to be confident that she's actually dealt with these sorts of things, dealt with these emails. And that is our goal. So let's pause the share. And I would like to, if anybody's got questions on which of these adventures we want to sort of tackle today. So uh, do you want, Karen, do you want me to go through and call on people uh, for speaking or do you guys want to raise your hands? How do we want to do this? Yeah, if there's a topic that somebody wants her to go through, I mean, I the email how to even how to sort that so that you don't miss important ones. Yeah, email we tackle my, the inbox. Yeah, yeah. All right. I love tackling the inboxes. That's like my favorite thing. Um, and for the month of June, I'm offering free Let's Tackle Your Email Inbox topic tackles. So schedule 30 minute one to one with me and we will play with your email. Um, and no worries. I, um, I love seeing a lot of emails in an inbox, even if they're unread, because that means we've got a place to start. And it's super exciting. So let's put that, I'm going to put the um, scheduling thing here, topic tackle, and in there's a little field in there saying, is there a topic tackle code or something? Um, and just say, Nicole told me to schedule for a, a spring clean my email inbox, and we'll just get that worked on. We won't be able to necessarily fix it all in a 30 minutes, but we'll definitely get you a good start. And so we're going to go to um, back to the screen share, and we're going to look at testing's email inbox. Uh, we want this one. So here's the scheduling for the 30 minute topic tackle. And over here, see, this is fun. I have 9,000 emails here in, um, in my testing account for us to play with. Um, First, before I do that, in the chat box, let me know whether or not you are primarily Gmail, primarily Outlook. And if you're if you use the Outlook email, do you use the Outlook online version or the program or something else? And then I can can demonstrate the different <laughs> potentially the different programs. So we've got a Gmail. Any other Gmails? Gmail and Outlook Online. Excellent. Gmail is among the easiest. So we got Yahoo. Uh, pers oh, personal versus business as your Gmail and Outlook. Excellent. So these strategies are um, somewhat platform specific and, and somewhat universal. Well, the first thing that we're going to do whenever we look at an inbox that is crazy town is to really just look at the first 10 emails or so, because what's coming in, we've got two, two potential problems with an overflowing inbox. One, there's a bunch of crap in there that you don't need and you never should have received in the first place. Or two, you're overloaded with too many people needing your time. And it's just, you're just overloaded. So for the first option is a much simpler solution. If you're getting a, a ton of emails that you don't actually need, that's relatively easy to solve, although it is time consuming. And that's where this maintenance comes in. And as you're looking at the, uh, the emails in there, you'll notice we've got some you know, newsletters that you probably don't need. 
uh, a bunch of those and we can totally delete them, but they're going to come back because we are still signed up for that newsletter. So, so that unsubscribe is super important and thinking in terms of what to unsubscribe from, try as hard as you can to eliminate that FOMO feeling, that fear of missing out because that email is going to have a super duper good deal. Or like I have several of my clients who are like, well, I'm really afraid to unsubscribe from Alaska Air because I need to get my plane itinerary information. There are two types of emails. There are marketing emails and there are um, I can't think of the, the, the right terminology off the top of my head, but there are the emails that you actually need, like the, the airplane itinerary, the actual um, communication of the service you have purchased. They sh will be on two separate systems. So if you unsubscribe from Alaska's marketing emails, you're still going to get your itinerary. You're still going to get your, your actual, you know, your Amazon tracking information, even if you unsubscribe from everything Amazon. So if you can subscribe, do subs un if you can unsubscribe, do unsubscribe. And the biggest challenge that I see with people uh, opting to not unsubscribe or being hesitant to unsubscribe is just, are they going to respect me when I say unsubscribe or are they just gonna give me more crap? Because there's been plenty of times where you're like, I unsubscribed from Amazon and then I got eight more Amazon emails. Well, you probably just unsubscribed from Amazon shirts. You didn't unsubscribe from Amazon books, Amazon dresses, Amazon housewares, Amazon. They have tons and tons of different bifurcated emails. And so when you go through an unsubscribe process, you got to really hunt for these things. Here we got our unsubscribe, which is usually at the bottom, usually in small letters. Sometimes Google will have one up here and sometimes it works well and sometimes it just blocks it, which doesn't quite solve the problem as well. But we're gonna click this unsubscribe. This WebMed is a really good example. Here, I can unsubscribe from, we've got, usually uh, it used to be a good example. Sometimes you'll see a whole ton of lists of things to unsubscribe from. And here this web med wants you to stay with some of it. You get too many, another reason. If you click any of these, they're gonna wanna say, okay, well, we'll, we'll limit it or, or we'll change it, which might be fine. But most will have an unsubscribe from all. In fact, they're required to. Look for that, hunt for that, beg for that because they do hide it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that unsubscribe from all. And it says you've been successfully unsubscribed, you might get a couple more emails, which you might, but usually it's immediate. Now, the next step that I recommend, if you're like, I don't know if I trust WebMed to unsubscribe me, if that's the case, I recommend you create what I call an unsubscribed folder and stick that one email there. Because there you have a record of I did my part, I unsubscribed. That way, if you continue to get more of those emails, you can you know, reassure yourself that you're not crazy, that you did unsubscribe. The other thing that you can do, and this is works really well on Outlook, is when you click on the email, so this is another web med, because they send me you know absolute ton of them, because <laughs> I subscribe to it so that I can have an example for you. We're going to, to highlight this one and notice this top bar on Gmail. These little dots will give us more and we can filter messages like these. This filter, it's also a, the Gmail search and it will find all of the emails using a search parameter that Google believes is helpful. So in this case, it's this list 700 whatever, and that may or may not be accurate. So I'm gonna click away and take a look. So as I click away, I'm like, oh yeah, this looks like it is all the web med, but maybe I just want the ones that say web med. In that case, I might go back and then I'll say, let's get rid of this, has the words and this listing and just do web. Web med here, let's, let's make sure we get it absolute accurate. Here's the email that it came from. 
go back to my filter, paste that email in there. And now I'll do a search for all of those emails. So these are all the emails that actually come from that particular email address. And Google, this is a, a very specific to Google thing. Notice, remember I moved that email to my unsubscribe and tagged it. Here it's listed that it's tagged. The rest of them are in the inbox. So I'm gonna actually select all of these by clicking this top box. And I have an option. Now I did, did save this guy here in the unsubscribe. And so I have a choice on whether or not I want to you know, keep him in that unsubscribe and then delete everything. So I can totally do that. This particular email has a bazillion. So I might be like, ah, screw that. I just wanna get rid of all of them. Select all messages that match this search. And off they go. Goodbye messages, they are gone. If there's a lot, it might take Google a bit of time to believe me and actually uh, do that. So here, let's do another search. See if it got them, there we go. So it did actually get that done. So in Outlook, and I have example on Outlook Online, I don't actually have the Outlook program set up properly on this computer. I should probably get that done. I was fighting with it not too long ago. But the online Outlook interface has a similar situation. And it's got a very cool thing. Let's see if we can find, here's a good one, this beta brand. We can go ahead and select that. And this works with some things. Sometimes it's not available and I haven't figured out entirely why it's not always available. They probably have a very good reason. But there is this little option called Sweep, which is super fun on Outlook. So you click this little sweep guy and it will give you an option. So everything from beta brand, move it all to the inbox folder or move them, move them from the inbox folder, which what this will do is move it from the inbox folder and delete it. Or you could archive it or you could put it in a different folder or you could do something else with it. Um, you could move all the messages and all the future messages, you could do that to this particular thing. Or you can always keep just the latest message. I generally like to choose the move the all message from the inbox to deleted after I've unsubscribed. I don't necessarily recommend this delete the messages from the inbox folder and any future messages just because you wanna get off of their list. And this here will delete it, but you'll still kind of be on their list. So, but that one is a pretty cool thing. So that's the deleting and it will help you clear out all of the odd inbox or odd emails that you have that are just really overwhelming your system. So I'm gonna stop the share. Any questions on that? Did I go too fast, not fast enough? Is this all old school and you're like, duh? Any questions on there? I'm not, okay. I'm not sure if this oh, was part, I got one. I'm not sure if this yeah. was part of what you just said because it like sometimes it does go fast for me. But <laughs> when yeah. you've got like everything, like so I have a system called Practice Better and every, every single transaction, every single notification, email, change of schedule, everything comes in under this like notification email. If I want to, have that automatically when it comes in to go into the file that I've created for it. How do you set that up? So like, it doesn't even hit the inbox part. It just automatically goes into. Yeah. Yeah. So which platform are you using? Did uh, you put it? Gmail. 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 Okay. Yeah. Gmail is Gmail makes it relatively easy. I really like the way that Gmail does it. So we're going to go back to Gmail. Um, it's back in the same field here of filters. So let's say we're going to go back to our inbox and find something super fun. So here we've got the beta brand. Let's say you only want the emails that are about dresses to go into your special deals folder or, or whatever. You click your little, um, I generally like to start with the three dots and then filter messages like these because then it gives me a clue as to, okay, where should I start? 
Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, so it's info beta brand. Um, in the subject line, if what I like to do, especially with the emails that I send out is I have the, every email that I send out is techie rescue. So I could put that in, but in this particular case, let's do just dress just so that we can, can have something that is consistent. And we're going to click this guy, this create a filter, and then we get tons more fun options. Option number cool, <laughs> or the best option that I think is called skip the inbox aka archive it and I might go over that in a moment and then you can apply a label because Google believes in labels and we'll pretend that they're folders if that helps us so we're going to choose a label and so we'll say that this is a, a newsletter and then you have this little guy down here that says go look in my system and see if you can find other messages that fit these parameters which just happens to be seven. <clears throat> and so now, so from here on out, I'll hit the create filter. Those, those dress e emails from beta brand will go in my newsletter folder. If I'm like, oh crap, I didn't really mean to do that. Then I would just go into settings and filters and block addresses. And right here is that entry. And I can edit it and adjust it if I need to. And so the existing mm -hmm. ones that are already in the email box, will they move over when you do that? Or do they will get move them? they will get that if you click that that select everything that fits these parameters, it will attach that label to it. If you had a previous label already assigned, it will not remove it. It will just remove the inbox because you told it to archive. Um, okay. But it, it it will keep the other labels intact. Um, okay, cool. The similar thing for an Outlook is a little more, we've got the sweep capability, but we also have the rules, which tend to be a little bit harder to pin down. Advanced, so we'll select an email, advanced action and create a rule. And here we can always move the messages from this to a particular folder. That's kind of our default option. Um, or you can choose this more options and then you're gonna get more of that um, conditions that we saw in Outlook where it's like name, subject, keywords, find out you know, this, this add a condition is, what are the parameters of this email? And then under number three here, this action, then once you've established the parameters of how to find the email, what do you do with the emails that have been found? And this is where you can move, copy, delete. I tend to use delete as a last resort for like maybe those Nordstrom emails that tell you that you have four points left that you can't unsubscribe from because they are transactional. That's the word, transactional emails. So I generally will delete those because I don't really want to mark them as spam because somebody needs to get that information. Somebody cares about how many points they have with Nordstrom. I do not. <laughs> now we're gonna discard this. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a bit of a cough. All right, any other questions there? Filtering is, is a ton of fun. Does anyone have a hot topic that they would really love an answer to about organizing their email or their calendar or their files? So I, I do, there's one quick tri trick that I have just found yeah. super helpful. Yeah, or if you have more tricks. Yeah, well, from you <laughs> is how, you know, I mean, I don't know if anybody else has this where you, you have to have a password system. Mm. Yes, the password pattern. Yeah. Uh, how many of you have nightmare passwords? So everybody's got their passwords under control. A lot of people have nightmare passwords. And <laughs> okay, good. We got, yeah, we got I, I have a suggestion. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I love I it have, when, when we have I other have ways an to old solve phone. It. I have an old phone, many years old, that's not online. Oh, okay. Nobody can access it but me, and I have all my passwords stored on it. That is a good way. That is I have a, a I way. have a folder on it, so it, it's password protected to begin with, but it's not online, so nothing can get backed up. And and oh. then 
whenever I need to get a password, I just go into, it's a lists app and I just go under and I scroll. I, I have hundreds of them in there and I just click on that company and there it is. So and whenever I travel, wherever I go, I bring this phone with me. Now, if I lose the phone, I'm screwed, but. <laughs> <laughs> there are pros and cons for everything. Yeah, yeah. And that, you know, yeah, and that and that just leads to the whole password situation and conundrum is how do we make it usable? How do we make it secure and how do we make it consistent? So your system is super secure as long as you don't lose it. So, so when we, when I recommend that people use LastPass, it's like, okay, it's not quite as secure as, as UD's method, but it's secure enough. And you can access it even if you lose your, your primary device or you lose them because it is cloud-based. Um, making sure that you set it up correctly and you have some, some, uh, I guess the backdoor access is set up the way that they need to be. So you have protections in case you get locked out of your last pass um, is generally the best method of managing your passwords. It's not perfect. Yes, last pass could get hacked. The likelihood of, of it getting hacked and getting your actual information is astronomically low. So spelling last pass is L-A-S-T. P A S S and it's and it's one of the they offer a pretty robust free version. There's also one password dash lane. There's a bunch of them, and you want to find a legitimate one because we want to. What our goal is with passwords and security in general is to just not be low hanging fruit. So that comes to our if nothing else, establish a password pattern, and there's two that I recommend. One primarily, and that is come up with your own special word, your own special number, your favorite special character, and then add a little tag of what that website is about. So, so like I use GOO for all of my Google accounts. I use MIC for all of my Microsoft accounts. So I might have my special word, and I'll just give you an example, not my real password. Uh, let's say love5309, uh, exclamation point G-O-O -O would be my Google's password, where love 5309 exclamation point M-I-C would be my Microsoft password. The majority of that password is exactly the same every time on every site, but there's a little bit of identifier that allows it to be more random. In case someone hacks into my Google account, they don't automatically get my Microsoft account. Yeah. There are very fabulous hackers, I'm sure, that could figure out my system and truly hack the heck out of me. But the likelihood is a lot less than if my password was love1234. So we're just trying to be less low hanging fruit with each of these, these security steps. So any other questions or comments or best practices in this technology uh, situation? We have, I think, eight minutes, Karen. Yes. Well, you know, there's so much to know. There's so much to learn. So what I would really highly suggest is going over to your, um, your, what do you call me? Your puzzle pieces? My, your my game, pieces, my your game. game pieces. Sorry. <laughs> and finding out what you don't know. It's like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. Cause that's kind of where I was at. It's like, oh, I didn't mm -hmm. know I could actually have an organized email. <laughs> I could have we, it we different. I, I could have it different than it is. Or oh, there is a way to organize all of my Google Docs, all of my files on my computer. There's, you know, there is some naming systems that could work. Because as a mm -hmm. creative, I'm all over the place. Yeah, you've got, and you really, to be honest, you had better things to do with your time. Yeah. So the systems that I have created are systems, and I've you know, over the years determined, okay, this is a great way to do this. This is a great way to do that. And even over the years, I mean, like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I advised that 10 years ago. That was dumb. But a lot of it is also pick a way and do that way to be, to be consistent. Um, and it's kind of like, if you, if you've got, okay, this is how I name my files. It might be a, a backwards way of doing it, but if it's the way you do it and it works, then, then we're, we're in for the win. And so 
coming up with these best ways is mind-numbingly time-consuming. And, and I've already done it. And, and I'm happy to share my way with you. And you can love it or hate it, you know, use it or don't use it. But it is a way that it might be like, okay, I'll just do it this way. And then I can think about something else. I can think about living your best life, you know, in the, the RV. I can, you can think about the healing and the hypnosis. And you can think about how the best travel places for children with autism. And you can think about who matches with whom. And, and all of these other things free your mind to think of better things <laughs> than yeah. how you should organize your, your stuff. Just yeah. you know, pick away. I would and, be and, really, oh, sorry, Nicole. Oh, yeah. And I would love to, you know, please take advantage of my topic tackles because I um, really like cleaning out email inboxes. So I would love to hear um, what, just from everybody real quick, what is your top um, tech issue? Is it email? Is it your calendar? Oh, yeah. Is it Top your file? Or is, is it the organization? What is that one overwhelmed piece that just goes, oh gosh, I got to go deal with that or that you avoid? It'd be fun to hear. From <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you mentioned two of them, email we did today and the organization on the desktop, like when something, like you've created something or some, yeah. you download something, like where does it go and how do you do it right. and then the, ma the maintenance of it, right? Like we can get the system, but then the maintenance of it. So I love this and I already booked a call with you tomorrow. So <laughs> yay. <laughs> I, you did, I think you had a, you had a, I yeah, I, I've been dealing with how do I, how do I have everything in front of me? So I've been looking at apps so that it will help me you know, organize the emails and the schedules and the phone calls and just like a scheduler on steroids i'm looking for something like that that has everything in one place to kind of help organize my day block out my yeah. day because i i've been moving away from paper more and more and um but i want it to be cross-platform from computer to phone as well exactly and then, exactly and then not only that but <laughs> both gmail and outlook so so right and not be 300 billion dollars a month yeah 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 so that you're looking for a unicorn i'm looking for a unicorn yeah sure and which they, they exist so i'm I'm not worried about they it. do sort <laughs> of exist but they're i have yet to find the unicorn that fits all the boxes because everybody has different needs but what we can definitely do is make the tools you have work well enough so that we can add these other things in like you know i think of my own system which is of course not perfect i don't actually have a unicorn in my world but i do a lot of my business management with the zoho crm system which has a ton of things i also use clickup to manage tasks also in that tech stack is calendly um, so what i do is i and, and i and i'm a gmail my business is primarily Gmail, although I also have a Microsoft 365 account. So, so the strategy is almost more important than the actual apps. So if you are a Gmail person or a Microsoft person, that's the best place to start. So like I have several people that are 100% Gmail people, which means GQs might be an excellent task manager for you. I am too cross-platform, so that particular task manager doesn't work for me. I like ClickUp. It's we're also thinking of the more a tool can do, the longer it takes to ramp up with it. So like ClickUp can be very overwhelming for people just mm -hmm. beginning to use it. Um, and, and that's a, and that's a consideration. And so getting clear on what it is you actually need the thing to do is probably your first step. So like Judy, you're thinking, okay, I need to be able to answer my emails. I also need to, an easy way to schedule. I need an easy way for people to register for my, my thing. And as you use the different tools, you'll find, okay, I really like Zoom for registering, except they really suck at exporting and importing uh, contacts. So, so maybe eventually we'll add a different tool to that, but finding where are the gaps and using them is the first step. 
Excellent. I'm happy to too. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Nicole. Thank you very much. We have two, one minute left. So I'm just going to go ahead yeah. and um, thank you for doing all of this for us and giving us some tips. And yes, ladies, go book a time with Nicole. Yes. Yeah. We can a handle on this so we don't have to think about it so we can think about more important things in our businesses. So any last, any last word? Thank okay. you. Yes, thank you for coming. It was lovely to see everybody.